Hello, everyone. It is really nice to see so many of you on this call tonight. There's about 10 participants and we're hoping to at least about six or seven, well, six other ones registered and hopefully they'll come in a little bit later. I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on why we're here and how we started these. And then I'll turn it over to Amy Woods, who is going to share with us how GLOBE looks in her classroom. The reason why we started doing these is because we had a lot of teachers who were first time teachers coming to the SRS and a lot of other teachers who weren't sure how they were going to come to the SRS and what that looks like in their classroom and preparing for the SRS. Can everybody hear me okay? I just wanna make sure because I have a child outside my door who's playing Legos. So <laughs> I can hear him <laughs> playing. Um, so I just wanna make sure you can hear me too and not just him. So that's good. Thank you, Larissa, for giving me the thumbs up. So um, what we're gonna do is just kind of go through what the SRS is. These are the Student Research Symposia. There's six of these that take place across the country. And if you'll see in the bottom, these were supported by NASA and they're also supported by YLASIS, Youth Learning as Citizen Environmental Science uh, Scientists. Uh, let's see. These are for all grade levels, five through 12. So we do, because they're in-person events at this point, we have only, uh, we've limited to fifth through 12th grade. We get, have supported teams in attending them. And right now we have some funding support available, but we're pretty much, we've given out all, most of the, funding that we're going to give out this year and that's to support students travel to the events themselves the events uh, we had our first one last weekend it was great it was hosted by marcy Seavey at the university of northern iowa in cedar falls and the students had a great time there were wonderful activities at night it, for networking that first night and then the day we had some great reviewers give them positive feedback and in the afternoon the students really had these field trips that were in tune with what their research area areas were and they got to meet university faculty and do some really cool activities so the next one coming up is the pacific i saw tracy was on the line and that's gonna be at Nature Bridge of Golden Gate, and we're really excited about that one. We have some background there, so I'm gonna mute that. <laughs> okay, um, sorry about that. Okay. So the next thing is we have these archive webinars online and each of them cover a different of the science practices. We just had one from Cornell Lewis from SSAI and he did one on how to enter data onto the GLOBE website and he did a really quick intro on how to uh, get the data out of the GLOBE website. But we also have some other webinars and resources on the Student Research Symposia web pages. And we just added a few new resources that you may just wanna take a quick look at those pages again, because we did some other ones on uploading data and also uh, poster making. So we added those recently. We have a teacher hotline. Our teacher hotline is staffed by teachers that have gone to the SRS before. And if you have a question, you can fill out a simple Google form and we match you up with a teacher that would have some experience with what your particular question is. And so we have that as a resource for teachers. 
We also have some blog posts by teachers and those are correlated to the science practices. And so those are on the science practice pages or you can also visit my blog, which is where they posted theirs as guest bloggers. And we are still trying to get student videos. We have not had any submissions for that, but what we are looking for is students to kind of talk about how they do one particular step in the research process. So we would really like to get that still in the works somehow. Uh, but I know you're busy. I know teachers are busy and uh, but if there's a way to work that into maybe some of the assessment that you do as a, you know, proof of how they can, um, for instance, analyze data and make a short video on it. We would love to have things like that from students. And then we have a teacher listserv. If you aren't on it, that is the best way to stay up to date on the SRS, the deadlines, and also about webinars that we have, and we try and highlight a teaching resource or a teacher in each of those emails. They come out about every other week or every three weeks, depending on the time of year. Uh, it, we, they come out more frequently when we're closer to the SRS, and then during the rest of the year, they're kind of every three weeks. So this is the web page for reaching all the information that I just talked about, the Student Research Symposia. We'll be posting the media from the SRS in Iowa that uh, last weekend. It was also on Instagram, Facebook. We did some Facebook Live stuff, and uh, it's on Twitter as well. So you can search for our hashtag, and it is hashtag globe, uh, let's see, under bar SRS, under, underscore SRS 2019. So that's all I have. I'd like to turn it over to Amy now. And I will say that it has been a pleasure getting to know Amy. I remember the first year she was one of our first SRS teachers at the very first SRS. And that took place at NASA Goddard. And I just remember meeting the student that she brought. She brought one single student, right, Amy? Is that correct? <laughs> she brought one single student. And from there, her program, her GLOBE program has just blossomed. And we are so lucky to have her talk about this because over the years, it's been so wonderful to see what has happened in her classroom and how it's expanded and how she's been walking away with recognition, uh, students that get recognized for the great work that they're doing in her classroom. So Amy, it is a great, great honor to have you here. So thank you so much for doing this. Well, thank you for allowing me to be here and thank you guys for allowing these opportunities because this is everything that I've had been looking for and um, without all of the support from you all, we definitely wouldn't be uh, anywhere near where we are today. So thank you all. Um, I'm gonna try to share my screen, is that okay? Yep. Okay. Um, hopefully this works. <laughs> can you all still hear me? Yes. And can you see my slides? Yes. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Um, so we, we are in a very small school in um, Gettysburg, which is a very small town. And we do a school-wide science, uh, which we now call symposium, um, after, after having gone to GLOBE and um, seeing the symposium and liking the symposium idea uh, better than just the regular um, science fair idea. Um, we turned it into a whole school science symposium. So our pre-K through three does class projects, uh, four through six, which I run, uh, do class group projects. And then seventh and eighth, which I also run, do uh, individual or small group projects that are much more in depth. And uh, each year I am able to do a little bit more globe um, in each class. So 
in four through eight, at least one part of what they present has to do with the GLOBE protocols. Um, we're still mostly focused on atmosphere and hydrosphere because um, I, I, Mr. Toth uh, from NASA Goddard uh, taught me the hydrosphere um, with through advancing science, um, which is how I got started. Uh, first, so I was a bit more comfortable with the hydrosphere and a lot of my students are very interested in the atmospheric protocols. So um, we're working on that and then I'm trying to do more with the biosphere and the pedosphere uh, each year a little bit more. Um, so in fourth grade, we start with clouds and then each year we go up a little bit more and introduce more protocols and get, get them used to more and more protocols and more in-depth testing. Um, and I train them in the protocols first and then in sixth uh, through eighth, they get to kind of choose what they wanna do. Um, fourth, fifth, and sixth, I kind of lead them through the process because they're still learning so much of it. Um, but I try to get them outside to test uh, starting like on day one uh, as, as quickly as I can, even if it's just to introduce it. Um, but I start out asking them, you know, what do you want to know more about? What problem do you want to try to solve? And some of these pictures here in the center are from the GLE, which we were fortunate enough to attend in Ireland uh, this past summer, which was one of the best experiences I've ever had uh, in my whole life. So that was really amazing. Um, I use all of the resources that GLOBE provides a lot. Uh, I use Google Classroom, so I'll put the links right there on Google Classroom so that they have access to it uh, and they can go back and look at things um, even when they're not in class so that they'll always have access to it. And uh, the resources that they have through the IBSS web page and the Student Research Symposia uh, website are the ones that I use most frequently. Um, they're all, they're both really, really, really helpful. And the uh, how to create a student research report on the IBSS uh, resource page is really helpful. Um, that, that I found it kind of helps guide the students and gives them kind of like a step-by-step -step checklist almost. And then the uh, resources here, the, the videos, the archived webinars that you had mentioned, um, I'll show parts of those to the kids and I have like a slideshow kind of highlighting the, the notes that I took when I watched it the first time and then um, like the parts that the kids have the hardest with or the things that I really want to make sure that they remember to include. Um, I'll highlight that. Uh, the teacher blogs are super helpful too and, the, and then the hotline um, I, I think is a great idea so I'm hopefully hopefully that's helpful to people. And uh, the dates, um, we have our school science fair in November so I kind of use that and I tell the kids, especially in seventh and eighth, that it's like our rough draft. Um, obviously they have rough drafts <laughs> prior to that before they present um, at our fair, but I say, you know, this is a chance to present your data to the public, um, to the judges that we have come in that are like just kind of volunteers, uh, some are parents, some are some STEM professionals in our area, um, to come and talk to the kids and ask them questions and just get them comfortable what they've learned and uh, so I, I take it as a rough draft for them so we have to have whole thing started and finished um, sometime in early November and then um, after they have our we have our science fair then they they're continuing to take data uh, as often as like they have decided um, for their schedule, depending on what, what they're investigating, um, they'll continue to take data and continue to add that. And then they'll go back and use the feedback from the judges from our fair to help um, improve their project and to like go deeper. And then with the help from uh, the GLOBE mentors, uh, guests that we have come in from um, local organizations like Advancing Science and um, Mr. Toth uh, and other GLOBE partners, um, they, 
that help the kids. Um, sometimes I can't always get them in before our science fair, but I'm able to get them in um, at different times or, or when the kids are kind of like hit a, hit a block or a, a stopping point where they're, they're having trouble or they've like kind of got the basic idea, but they want to go deeper and develop their idea further. Um, so these, the GLOBE mentors and the GLOBE partners have been incredibly helpful um, to, to me and the students for helping us understand. Uh, this year we were fortunate enough to actually have a webinar with uh, Mr. Toth and Dr. Pippin and uh, Angie Rizzi um, to help one of my students who is doing aerosols, which is uh, definitely not one of my strong points. <laughs> so I'm trying to stay one step ahead of her. Um, but what she was trying to do, I just, I like, I just, I need help. So um, Dr. Pippin has been really, really helpful in, in helping us make her research and help her understand her research and help her um, display it in a way that is more understandable. Uh, some problems that I've come across is just time management. It's difficult when the kids are each doing different projects. Um, we learn to use clipboards uh, whenever we go outside. Uh, so we attach our data sheets to clipboards. I have a, a milk crate full of clipboards with pens attached with strings with the data sheets on them and the cloud viewers uh, from UCAR uh, on the clipboard so that when we go outside, I have a plastic bin with all of the equipment for that particular protocol that we're working with. Um, and then the kids get their milk crate, uh, their clipboard out of the milk crate, um, and then whatever safety equipment they have so that we can go outside. But we definitely learned that clipboards are important. <laughs> um, just overthinking, it's usually coming from me and not the children, but sometimes the children. Um, the, the app is really great. Uh, and I haven't had the problem as much this year as with my old phone, but every time it was cold outside, my old phone would die, even though like I it would say I would have 60% battery and I'd be trying to take the measurements with the app, uh, but then my phone would die because of the cold weather. But I haven't had that trouble so much since I got a new phone, which is, which is great. <laughs> um, in 2016, this is uh, my student, Maddie Sig. Uh, this was my first experience with Globe. Uh, and like I said, Mr. Toth uh, was at a presentation that a training that we were at at Advancing Science and he started talking about GLOBE and I was like, well, my own student is doing water quality research and this fits in perfectly. And so it just kind of went from there and she ended up getting uh, the award at the SRS. And um, we found out that the IVSS was due at midnight that night. So after we finished uh, presenting at the SRS and all the amazing opportunities there at NASA Goddard, um, we spent the rest of the night in the hotel room finishing and recording her project <laughs> and submitting it to um, Globe, the ver uh, the, our first Globe IVSS. I think we finished and submitted at 11.58. Um, so it was closest I had ever come to um, the deadline, <laughs> but we, we made it just in time. And then she was actually able to attend the annual meeting that year in Estes, Colorado. And then this past year, we went to the SRS, which was in Buffalo, and I had seven students, eight, eight students present there. And then I was fortunate enough to be able to take four students to the GLE in Ireland this past summer. And they have just had an amazing time presenting and meeting new people and getting inspiration. Uh, Anna actually, she got her inspiration from what she saw um, at the Buffalo SRS and uh, some of the projects that were presented at the GLE, uh, she got her inspiration for this year's project from them. So that I thought that was a really great uh, uh, um, connection that she made as well. And this year uh, we have um, 14 projects, six uh, individual or team projects uh, from my sixth and eighth graders. And then uh, uh, I have class projects for fifth and sixth that we are working on completing as a class. Um, and then the sixth grade is, is broken up into smaller groups. Um, I have uh, the nine students that I hope to take to Boston. I know most are interested. We're trying to finalize those details. Um, at the moment, all nine are going. So I'm hoping that that continues as we continue uh, 
with the registration process and everything and just wrapping up the final details. Um, so I'm hoping that I can get all nine there. And then um, I'm hoping that at least half of them, or I really like all of them to attend the annual meeting and present in Detroit. Uh, I'm hoping to continue to inspire these students that they continue to get inspiration from all the other GLOBE students and to inspire um, more of my students to take on the IVSS and SRS challenge because it is a lot of work. Like if they work all year on it. Um, each time they present and get feedback, they improve their project and try to go a little bit deeper so that by the time the IVSS and SRS comes along um, that they have received at least a little bit of feedback and have made more improvements and just uh, been able to work with their data and understand it and present it better. Uh, I am hoping that this will play. I have some student feedback um, about why I think we might have lost you a little bit. I'm hoping you come back. <laughs> the other students did, so they decided to get involved into GLOBE. Um, and then uh, she wasn't able to attend the SRS last year because of a family obligation, but uh, she is hoping to attend this year. So. I don't know if it'll load, I'm hoping. My name is Lily Shiner and I've been doing GLOBE for two years. My favorite thing I've done with GLOBE is go to Ireland last summer with the GLE. I like GLOBE because I get to connect with students around the world and make a difference in my community through my project. Thank you. Jacob Fleming. I like to do GLOBE because it gives me the opportunity to meet new people. My favorite part of doing GLOBE is that I get to take the different scientific measurements. Thank you. I chose to do GLOBE because I wanted to continue to take measurements at the pond and to continue to do my science project. Um, I like doing the test of the water quality at the pond and I look forward to um, meeting new people at GLOBE. Thank you. My name is Sophia Willard. My name is Molly Fleming. And my name is Jake Woods. My favorite part of GLOBE is using all the neat equipment and getting to go to different places all over the world and meeting new people. I also like to use different equipment and I like GLOBE because of the opportunity opportunities it um, offers. I like to use the equipment and meet the new people at different places and go to the different Thank you. I enjoy doing both because it gives me the chance to interact with other young scientists around the world and working with experts in the fields of investigation. I started doing love this year. I wanted to have a project that I could share with my community. So 
communicating and with the world. I've enjoyed doing loves so far, but my favorite part has been the data analysis of my project. Gloves testing my. <clears throat> I, I chose glove because I want to do more than I did last year. Because I want to uh, uh, do the best thing for us. The opportunities that Globe has given uh, me and my students, because this is really everything that I had been looking for, trying to get the students involved in real science and analyzing real data and being able to talk with professionals who can give great advice and know what they're doing. And I think the biggest impact that I have heard back from the students is that they just can't believe that these actual scientists and professionals and college professors and people who are so smart and do all of these amazing things are actually interested in you know what they're doing and what they've done and are they just really enjoy meeting them and then talking with the other students and getting to see what they're doing and being like oh my gosh you know these people in different parts of the world or even you know a couple states away are doing exactly the same thing i'm doing but they're they're looking at it in a different way and i never thought about looking at this data this way or look, answer, asking that question so just the collaboration and the inspiration that occurs is amazing